Now, Professor Saeed Mohammed Marandi, the Chair of American Studies at the University of Tehran, has emerged over the last few years as a seer, as a political analyst and even forecaster of almost unparalleled brilliance. And I'm glad to say that some of his first gigs and some of his best gigs have been with me on the mother of all talk shows. Professor, it always seems to be the case that we, uh, we are together across the seas at times of the gravest importance and danger, moreover. Uh, it strikes me that we are at another of those inflection points now. The fact that uh, the Israeli forces have completely failed to destroy the resistance inside Gaza does not seem to have dissuaded them uh, from the uh, possibility of having a war uh, with vastly bigger, vastly more heavily armed and vastly militarily superior forces in Lebanon. Uh, that's the meaning to me of the American battle fleet steaming towards the Lebanese coast right now. How does that look to you? Thank you very much for your very kind words. Um, I think it's uh, true about almost everything that the Americans and the Europeans are doing nowadays. They are pursuing escalation in Europe. Simultaneously, they are pursuing escalation with China. And uh, now we have the genocide in Gaza and escalation potentially with Lebanon. So uh, this irrational behavior that is increasingly uh, dangerous, not just for one region or another, but the entire planet, uh, this is something that we should all be deeply concerned about. The, uh, this irrational behavior, I think, uh, is leading the West towards a gigantic collapse. They cannot, they've overextended themselves on all fronts. Uh, they're losing in uh, Ukraine. W we now see that they are beginning to admit the truth about Ukraine. If we go back and remember what they were saying about the uh, Ukrainian counterattack and how they were going to beat back the Russians, and that's all disappeared. And what we all knew back then is gradually coming out of the Western media, that things are very dark indeed for the people of Ukraine. And then, of course, with China, we see them constantly provoking China over Taiwan, a, a, an island right alongside the mainland where people speak the Chinese language. But uh, they insist on poking China. And then now we see this genocide. So. I think for all of your viewers, it's clear as day that they've overextended themselves, that they've destroyed their credibility, that they've destroyed their image. But irrational empires that are on the decline, that seems to be what they do. They, uh, The more desperate they become, the more uh, dangerous they become. They have uh, begun, uh, of course, it's on multiple levels, but part of the political, psychological war operation uh, is to try and divide the people of Lebanon from the Lebanese resistance. Uh, to uh, Macron said he would uh, arm uh, the forces of the Falange, uh, the Kateb, uh, uh, Jemael and co, uh, that he would uh, arm the Lebanese army uh, if they would go south and fight uh, the Lebanese resistance. Uh, we both know there are sectarian uh, um, fissures inside Lebanon. Indeed, there always have been. Uh, and uh, the country was deliberately constructed in a way uh, that would allow those uh, sectarian fissures to exist. What's your take on the state of unity of the Lebanese people in the face of these multi-pronged attacks? Well, let, let's go first back to the people that he wants to arm. So we all know who carried out 
the massacre in the Sabra and Shatila camp, but during the 1982 invasion of Lebanon, when the Israeli regime captured Beirut, they allowed these very same militias that Macron is speaking of to go into the Palestinian refugee camp and massacre up to 3,000 people in less than two days. So Macron is openly speaking about arming the forces of genocide, which I think is natural because the United States, the French and the Europeans, the Canadians and the Australians and New Zealand, they're all supporting the genocide in Gaza. Remember, during the first few months when everyone was speaking about a ceasefire, all of these regimes were openly against a ceasefire. And their media and their governments were constantly repeating the lies about burned babies, beheaded babies, raped women, and all that. Why? Because they wanted to give the Israeli regime the space, the justification to carry out this Holocaust, to carry out these massacres. So I think it's fitting for the French president to say that he will fund these genocidal figures who are very close to Western embassies in Lebanon and have been very close to them for many years. It, it makes a lot of sense. Just as they supported the fascists in Ukraine, just as they supported the Contras in Latin America, just as they supported ISIS and Al-Qaeda in Libya and in Syria and in Afghanistan for many years, and they've destroyed so much of our region as a result of that. So it's, I think it's, it's quite, uh, it's, it's, we should expect such words from a, a Western leaders who are in fact the most barbaric leaders on the planet today. But Lebanon has changed. Uh, the people of Lebanon, from what I've seen and from what I've heard, uh, they're much more united today than uh, before. In the past, the West succeeded to divide the people over Syria. But now people are witnessing uh, the, the Palestinians in the refugee camps, the people, the Sunnis across Lebanon, they see that it is the resistance uh, that is defending the people of Gaza, that is giving martyrs in order to draw away forces of genocide from Gaza to give space for the resistance to protect their people. So Lebanon is united. It will remain united. These forces of genocide that the French and others mean to support, they cannot uh, do the dirty work of the Israeli regime like they did in 1982. Do you expect all out war, uh, Professor, or are we talking incremental increases, attrition uh, between the two sides, or do you expect a 2006 type effort by Israel? It doesn't make sense for the Israeli regime to escalate. They've lost in Gaza. They couldn't take Gaza, which is a dot on the map. After almost nine months, they failed. All they've been able to do is to massacre tens of thousands of people. And the numbers are far greater than the official numbers that we see today. They're far greater. But uh, many are under, under the rubble. Many have died due to disease and due to malnutrition and starvation. So the, the people who've died directly and indirectly as a result of this genocide, the numbers are really much higher. But the Israeli regime has failed against Gaza. Do, does anyone think that they're going to beat Hezbollah? Does anyone believe that when Yemen, which survived a decade of genocidal war, where the Saudis and the Emiratis and the Canadians and the Americans and the Europeans all ganged up to starve Yemen and to destroy the country. That Yemen has defeated the Americans in the Red Sea. For months now, the Yemenis have enforced a blockade on Israeli ports to force them to end the Holocaust. And the Americans and the British are fighting Yemen to help the Israelis continue with this genocide. But the Americans have failed. So when the Israelis have failed in Gaza and the Americans have failed against Yemen, the most impoverished and battered country in the world, perhaps, how does the Amer how do the Americans or the Europeans think that they're going to be able to witness a, an Israeli victory over Lebanon? 
Finally, Professor, there was, uh, uh, we've become weirdly familiar uh, with the style of these ISIS attacks. Uh, a priest has had his throat slit on his altar. Uh, there are a uh, dozen scores of hostages being held right now in a Christian church uh, in Dagestan. Uh, there's uh, fighting going on all over the city. The Russian army is now deployed. The police uh, took a terrible toll at the hands of these uh, fanatics. But I wonder if they really are fanatics. They're not wearing uh, Western uniforms, but they might as well wear them. Am I right? Isn't it strange that all of these ISIS attacks, almost all of them, take place in countries like Syria and Iraq and Iran and Russia? Isn't it strange that uh, they don't take place in Israel or nothing really happens in Europe and the United States despite all these refugees coming in and uh, 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 you know being unaccounted for? Why is it that all these attacks, why is it all these outrages take place in countries that happen to have a problem with Western policies. Why is it that both the synagogue and churches, Orthodox churches in Russia, in Russia are being attacked? Why, why would they do this at a time when a genocide is taking place in Gaza and the Russians are opposing this, the policies of the Israeli regime uh, with regards to the Palestinian people? This doesn't make sense. But, of course, it really does make sense. Sadly, yes. Professor Mohamed Marandi, as always, a tour de horizon. In 15 minutes, the world summed up most brilliantly. Thanks for joining us.